You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to RollerMartinUnfiltered.com. You can make this possible. In February, the owners of an Arizona food truck, What You Cooking, uh, were assaulted by a white man during a business meeting. The couple now fears the man will not not be properly charged for the hate crime. Uh, folks, where do you see this video? So in this particular video, uh, we first saw this uh, on Now This. Um, it, and i got to show you this video here. Uh, they were sitting in this meeting, and all of a sudden, uh, the man just pulls out a gun on them in the middle of the meeting. They call the cops. Uh, it takes the cops 11 minutes to get there. Uh, just shocking and stunning. Watch this. Okay, uh, so um, again, it's just, uh, just an unbelievable story here. Uh, and uh, we're joining me now the co-owners of What You're Cooking Food Truck, Brittany and Solomon Odobaggio. Glad to have both of you uh, with us. Uh, f first, first and foremost, um, so set it up for, for, the, for our audience. Um, you, were, you were working with this shared kitchen, correct? Yes, so um, we were renting um, uh, the refrigerator unit and a freezer unit. Um, we, um, it's a commissary kitchen, and we were also prepping our meals um, so we can sell on our food truck um, with this kitchen. And so y'all go there for a meeting. What was the purpose of the meeting? So after only um, using their kitchen for times, and my husband, we received a notice, um, a 30-day notice. Um, they no longer wanted us in their kitchen. So Tom, too, um, told us that he wanted to meet with us on February 5th to discuss reasons of departure. All right. And so y'all go to this meeting. And um, what, what happens uh, in this meeting here, Solomon? He comes in with an All Lives Matter, and he starts complaining and ripping Black Lives Matter? So my wife was in a meeting. She can actually, that part, I was getting a food truck serviced um, bit before all that. Like it led up, I got there when it led up to, you see me sitting at the table, um, he put up the weapon, but my wife was there when he uh, brought the All Lives Matter shirt. You know, he's banging on the table and uh, it had, you know, the words, uh, Black crossed out, you know, first on a shirt, then it has white, and then it left uh, straight and gate open. But, you know, this thing for departure, that shirt that doesn't have any, it doesn't have anything to do with, you know, departure. So, so does I, so does what, so, so Brittany, you're sitting there, then all of a sudden, yeah. just out of the blue, he just comes in with this All Lives Matter shirt, and starts so ranting against Black Lives Matter? Yeah, so I was just sitting there and I noticed when he was um, walking up to me where he wanted to meet at, I noticed he had a piece of clothing folded in his hand. And, you know, once we began talking and he started giving reasons of why he didn't want us there, he um, became enraged and he starts unfolding the shirt and he shows me the shirt and he just starts yelling at me and calling me racist and pointing at me. And he begins telling me, um, you know, I can sit here all day, excuse my French, but he's like, I can sit here all day and tell you how shitty your business is and um, wouldn't get much like he just kept going on and on he was just so enraged and um i told him you know i said tom um you need to remain professional and calm down um and you know at that point i was like you know call your husband get him here because he was making me feel um very uncomfortable so at so so point, so okay so had y'all before had any conversation about black lives matter did y'all have blm posters on your on your truck uh, did did y'all have any previous discussions or run in over the issue of race or one of these high profile cases? No, we did not. So all of a sudden, dude just That's come in. He just comes in, just going nuts about Black Lives Matter and All Lives Matter. Yes, yeah. correct. So, the detective when we 
Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. We met with the, we met with the prosecutor on, a, on the 24th of March, and, you know, the detective stated, like, he actually forgot the shirt, so he went back and grabbed the shirt to bring it back to her from the video footage that they had. So, okay, so, so Brittany, this happens. You, all of a sudden, you call your husband. Um, uh, Solomon, yes. you, Solomon, you drop everything to come over there, and... I was getting... Service. Huh? I was I was in the middle of getting a food truck service. Our batteries had died because the uh, ground wire wasn't connected to the power wire. And so you and, so, so you race over. How long are mm -hmm. you there before he pulls? He tries to pull a gun out. Oh uh, man, we was there. Okay, so I walk in the door. So like ten minutes. It, it was like ten minutes before he showed up, but then it was like 15, 20 minutes before he pulled a gun out. So you didn't. So neither one of you knew. He was carrying a gun. No. Absolutely. And he wasn't, he didn't have the gun until um, after my husband. And when we were looking for him, that's when look, because when he had the meeting with me, he was sitting up. He was sitting up straight and everything. But if you notice, once my husband comes in, he kind of slouches because he has something in his back, which was found out to be the gun. So, so, so you're saying that when he met with you, the gun wasn't on him, and then when you decided to call your husband, that's what that's when he went and got his gun and put it put it in his uh, put it uh, in, uh, in the back of his uh, uh, jeans. Yes. Correct. So so all of a sudden, okay, you're sitting there, two of you sitting there, mm -hmm. and Brittany, uh, excuse me, Solomon, when he makes a move, do you do you do does your mind is you saying what is he doing? I think he's going for a gun. Um, so he took a deep breath. That alerted me off the back. He took a deep breath, and then he hesitated. But I watched his eye contact the whole time. And yes, he had. when he reached for his back weapon. So you, all of a sudden, you jump up. You 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 begin to wrestle with him, um, mm -hmm. Brittany. He's telling you, "Call the cops! Call the cops!" But you're scared to call the cops. Yeah, absolutely. Because of the world that we live in today and you see, you know, African-Americans getting killed or minorities getting killed um, and, you know, just because they have a weapon or, or just for no apparent reason, you know, and I felt as though the situation didn't look right. We're two African-Americans in a white establishment and there's a weapon involved where I felt like we definitely are going to get stereotyped. This call right now, this can be it for both of us, you know. So I was really nervous, and I just kept reminding myself. I kept saying, you know what, just keep on stressing and stating on the call that we're African American, and your husband's African American. He's not the suspect. Just make sure you keep making that clear, no matter what. That's my first thought, you know. Um, there was also people, other tenants in the kitchen, and I was actually thinking to ask them for help before calling authority, honestly. Man, them folks ran out the door. Yeah, they, they, they ran out the door. They wouldn't give us the address. So it was just like, it was so scary. Like, that was one of the scariest moments of my life. And it's like, they not even cooperating with the, like, the detective, you know, asked them to write a statement or, you know, what happened. They didn't, they said, oh, we don't even know. We, we was leaving. Yeah. Like, and they, but, which was a lie because they all was outside right when the incident happened I mean they was inside but then when the incident happened when the cops got there everybody moved outside so all right cops come there they finally arrive they detain him his wife comes and then what does she do to y'all as I we have a side and we were still writing our reports and she comes out and she's just like, it's like basically like it's time to go. Come get your stuff. And we were just in shock because for one, it is a weekend. It's Friday and it was like 4.30ish. And now all of a sudden we have to get out. Like, where are we going to store all this inventory? You know? So you, so, so, when you say all this, so, no so when you say all this inventory, you're talking about food. Correct. Yes. How, we have I, lost a lot of. How, how, how much? How much food did you uh, did uh, did y'all have there in terms of and, and, and what did it cost? Um, it was it was like a couple of thousands worth probably because we, my husband, he travels to go get our meats, um, and so we had all that stored. We we buy bulks of it so that way we will have enough, you know, until we're ready to go back out out of town. And so we had our. 
If I had to give an estimate, uh, I want to say what about a couple of grand. Yeah, probably a couple grand. Yeah, like a couple of grand. And then that's not even including because you got to think we have to pay to get all this shipment back. We have to pay to go there, room, you know. So it's just it was just so inconvenient and it was very I just no remorse. Um, her husband literally just tried to kill us for no apparent reason. Um, and so, so talk about uh, when y'all uh, y'all said uh, y'all did the interview and y'all said that y'all thought y'all were gonna lose uh, your food truck uh, and lose your business. Uh, how so? Because going to find a commissary kitchen. Everybody wants five thousand a month or four thousand a month for. I mean, that's like ridiculous. If I mean, if you really ask us, but um, so first of all, so you're saying you're saying you're saying, you're saying you say it's going to so, cost you for a shared kitchen four to five thousand a month for the shared kitchen. Well, uh, what were you paying at the at this particular place here? Uh, he was only charging us four hundred a month. Four hundred dollars a month. Four hundred dollars a month. Fifty, because they added. Four hundred and fifty. They oh. had added a fifty dollar fee, um, so because they had add a uh, freezer. Yeah. So basically, y'all were spending four four hundred fifty dollars a month, but you start calling other places. It was going to be ten times that to use their kitchen. Correct. Correct. Yeah, like it, their kitchen was actually more convenient. It was, close, you know, and it was paranoid. Like um, was anxiety is yes, like. It, it's, it gives us this anxiety to be in public, you know, around a bunch of people. We're always paying attention to make sure. Like, the first thing I look at is somebody hit. You feel me? Why I got to do that? Right. You know, I shouldn't have to live like that. We shouldn't have to live like that. Mm -hmm. It's like the trauma is affecting everybody, not just us, our kids. You know, mm -hmm. once again, like our daughter, she's eight. You know, she woke up in the middle of the night, 430 in the morning, crying. Oh, I had a bad dream that the guy in the kitchen tried to kill you guys or, you know, try to hurt us. So, you know, that's like for an eight year old to feel that, you know what I'm saying? It's like nobody should fear at all. Yeah. You know, and, and then you got to think it's like being in public. Y'all said that the so so talk about what the police told y'all that this guy may. So what's the status of the case? So basically, um, we are being told that he is not. Um, he might not do any, any jail, jail time. time. So basically, what he's there trying to get him to plead out to one aggravated count. Uh, uh, one felonious uh, count with, um, I mean, yeah, one disorderly conduct felonious or something like that. But this happened to two people. Why is he pleading out to one charge and then? Let alone he put everybody in that kitchen in jeopardy, you know. Right. So it's like, so the, so how, well, so what? What that? What that mean? No jail time? Is that? Is that? What is that? What they're saying? Yeah, yeah. And it's a possibility he might, you know, do no jail time or probation. Like how? If the shoe was on the other foot, this wouldn't. It right. wouldn't be fair. I have a high bond. They would have never let me out within anywhere from. He went to the hospital right after the, you know, situation. But then he was in the hospital for like six hours. They let him out at four thirty-three in the morning the next day, and they told us they weren't gonna let him out until we. File a restraining order. And they still let and him out. And they still let him out. And he's still out. So it's like a slap on the wrist. It's like you can go around harassing minorities and then you don't, nothing happens. You know, wow. he has authority, like power. I feel like not only that, we, since our story went viral, there has been other tenants that ran it from their kitchen and they have come forward and they are and they minorities. Are minorities. Correct. And they said they were harassed as well. Um, there's and caught on camera. And we, just like we told the prosecutor, we asked her, why is he out? And they go, well, he has no history of this. And it's like, well, look at all these mass shooters. Do they have history of this killings? No, they just snapped one day. And that's what he did. Literally, he just snapped for no reason. Like, you've seen it in his eyes. Um, when I, when you see me go over there to try to make sure he, my husband had him secure, he was to pull the trigger, but his finger was stuck in his shirt. Like the trick, the gun was stuck in his shirt, so he couldn't get his finger through the trigger. And it was like he was literally trying to shoot us. Wow. Um, it, 
folks said now this, the story uh, got posted. Uh, yesterday, uh, and I saw the GoFundMe, yesterday uh, it was at uh, 95000 uh, when I checked uh, yesterday, yesterday uh, morning. Uh, folks, go to my computer, please. Uh, right now, um, it is at uh, $181,655. Uh, Y'all are trying to raise uh, $250,000. Uh, and you're, you're trying to raise the $250,000 uh, to, to, to do what for your business? So we are either, we're trying to transition to a restaurant um, because, you know, I I feel safe to even be in a commissary kitchen. Like, I, would, I think I would just be too paranoid thinking someone's trying to kill me or, you know, um, having our own restaurant space would just be way better. Um, before we even started our uh, food truck, we were doing catering and our menu was much larger. So once we got a food truck, we had to limit it. So we feel, you know, right now is our time to, you know, be able to... Um, expand and have our uh, menu that we originally had, um, you know, a variety, a, a variety of things, excuse me, instead of, you know, a shorter menu. Well, folks, uh, y'all could actually go to, if you go to, if you go to GoFundMe, go, go back, uh, just put in uh, Solomon and Brittany uh, Odubajo, uh, O-D-U-B-A-J-O, right there, uh, and you can see the GoFundMe. Uh, Solomon and Brittany, we certainly appreciate it, you for joining us, uh, and certainly good luck, and hopefully, uh, hopefully this guy uh, will face some jail time for what he tried to do. Yeah, absolutely. And can we just say, you know, we want to thank everyone who's reached out to us, whether it be a repost or, you know, the money. We really appreciate it and we feel truly blessed. All right. We appreciate it. Thank you. Actually care. So thank you. Thank you so very much. Thank you. All right. Thank you. So we were talking earlier, Johanna, about racism being a public health threat. This is a perfect example of what just being black, you go through. And, and so here you have these folks, guy tries to pull a gun out. They're still, they're now, de they are now dealing with PTSD as a result of an act of racism. That has an impact on health. Exactly. And again, this is just one incident that we, that goes viral, right? And we know so many, so many others, you know, when you have um, kids who are strip searched after school um, by police officers, when you have resource um, officers on campus handcuffing kids for, for, for just misbehaving, for speaking too loud, for getting into altercation, which is what children do all the time. Um, so this, this, is, um, this is what we're talking about, racism being a public health crisis, because it impacts every aspect of our, of our lives. And one can argue that perhaps this man has a, a mental health issue, uh, but based on the testimony of, of, of the young woman, she indicated that others have to come forward, black tenants in particular, have said they have experienced similar action by, by, by this by this uh, landlord. Um, so again, um, it is a clear um, example of racism and how it impacts our health. Because now these individuals are, are are not even feeling don't even feel safe to be in in the public. And and as I'm looking at the young woman, you can tell this is someone who is very frightened. Um, especially considering that they have um, released um, this um, this individual from, from, from jail, um, and she doesn't know what this man will do again if he's going to strike back. So I am so sorry for what happened to them. Um, and it, it breaks my heart and, and I wish them much success. Um, and it just shows how, uh, how, how giving the American people are in this country, how so many people have rallied behind this young woman and, and her significant other to support her business and to help her to take her business to the next level. And I wish her nothing but the best. But this is also... The reality is we shouldn't have to deal with that. We, we shouldn't have to uh, go through that. We shouldn't have to experience that. All right, folks, back to that my uncle's video in just one moment. It's time to be smart. When we control our institutions, we win. We win. This is the most important news show on television of any racial background. Y'all put two, three, four, five, 10, 15, 20, 30 dollars on this and keep this going. What you've done, Roland, since this crisis came out in full bloom. Anybody watching this, tell your friends, go back and look at the last two weeks, especially of Roland Martin Unfiltered. I mean, hell, go back and look at the last two days. You've had 
sitting United States senators today, Klobuchar and Harris. Whatever you have that you have, you can bring to Roland Martin unfiltered to support it. Please do, because this information may literally save your life. Watch Roland Martin unfiltered daily at 6 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, Facebook, or Periscope, or go to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered Daily Digital Show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RolandMartinUnfiltered.com.